Hey guys, here's my MAK Lunar Diver Stingray kit, all painted and weathered up. It's an armored strike fighter used to spearhead the assault on the Strauss lunar bases, taking out the defenses with its powerful railgun to allow the follow-up forces to land and take control. My finish is trying to replicate how it might look towards the end of the re-entry burn back to Earth, and I'm thinking of calling it, that was bumpy. <laughs> what do you think? In this video, I will share with you how I ruined and then unruined it and tested out a bunch of new steps. It was a little scary, but loads of fun too. Just before we start, I'd like to give a grateful shout out to two stores in the USA who are carrying my new book locally there for you, Burbank House of Hobbies and Michigan Toy Soldier. They also both have MAK kits, paints and accessories too. I checked on their websites. No, this is not a sneaky promo at all, just a free shout out for good stores selling cool stuff. As a heads up for you awesome folks watching this, links in the description for you. If you are wondering about the build and paint steps, please check them out in this video. And it's actually one of the more popular ones of my recent videos, I hope you like it too. Just before we get into ruining it, I've decided to pre-detail the finish just a little more. And I thought this may interest you because we can use these steps for other projects as well. You know, the ones we're not going to ruin. I've redone the pencil line a little to help reinforce that demarcation line on the red bands. Why? Well, because I like the look of it. How it separates yet connects the red and white and I think it looks cool. Yep, that is totally a legit way to paint things and I hereby bestow this superpower upon you too. We really can paint stuff how we like. Revel in your time. Doesn't it feel great? Once they looked good to me, I reached for the Mr. Color Off-White again and loaded up a nice dry flat brush with it and wiped the excess paint off my Space White dish. Yep, that's the same dish from the Sea Pig for those of you who know my works well. This will slightly reactivate that yellow white and make the paint on the brush exactly what we'll use. I mean, you know, exactly what we want it to be. I'm then over brushing it back against the Imagine direction of travel on the red sections. So why? Well, two things will happen. First, it will layer on some off-white to help with the illusion of the, uh, the red sections having worn away a little. Then, if I go too far, and yep, you know that's our thing here, it will also reactivate some of the red-brown, removing a little and picking up a little. So why is this cool? Well, then it will be applied back onto the red-brown as we continue, and it will mix with the off-white and give us variations and highlights of the exact colors we used. Yes, we can control this too. Just closely observe what's happening as you go through this, and you'll be pleasantly surprised. And yeah, it'll look great too. Link's gunk wash tare recipe. No secrets here on my channel. I'm more than happy to share. Tare. Tare is a Japanese word and it's a joke I'll come back to later in the video. Uh, it just means a food source, most uh, commonly applied to steak, like this. And we want our mix to look something like this. Mmm, tasty. First I've added Tamiya enamel paint. Flat black and then flat brown, along with a generous amount of enamel paint thinner to a wash consistency. Then the oil paint. I used the appropriately named and popular Starship Filth and later added some black to make it a bit more punchy from the Ab Tai Lung range. Uh, Starship Filth is a mix of uh, brown and black and it's a good all-rounder for sci-fi modeling, so it's a handy one to have in your collection. This addition of the Tammy enamels completely changes everything and in my view, makes it actually work much better. The oil paints for the intensity of color, whilst the enamel paints help the mix to touch dry much faster and also appear to prevent curing, at least for the three or four days I was working on it. So as a side note, this is my experience with Tamiya enamels. They don't ever appear to fully cure, so that allows as much reworking time as we need. Now would this work with Humbrols or another brand? You'll need to test that one, but a heads up on my beloved Humbrols. They start to cure in just 12 hours and can be nigh impossible to remove after 24. Other brands? Well, please let me know your results and we'll share the, uh, the joy of information together. Ruin him. Slop it on. <laughs> I couldn't even get that out without laughing. So yeah, get coverage and just revel again in that feeling that you are somewhat safely, absolutely ruining your expensive plastic model kit with all that time you've invested in it too. Now really, right, 
Of course, I am taking care to apply it slightly heavier on details and stretch it out over the panel surfaces. Uh, I was asked in a uh, work in progress shot on Instagram why I didn't airbrush this on, because faster. I mean, sure, I, I think you could do that too. Why not? Uh, I do think that with the brush application, we could take advantage of some uh, pooling effects and you know, the wonderful inconsistencies that come from using a, a physical brush, a brush. But uh, sure, try it out and share it with me. I'm happy to see it. Also, have to admit, I wouldn't have fun cleaning this gunk out of my airbrush, but that's me. Paint brushes are a swirl in some thinner or water and a wipe and I'm good. Trying to be mindful about applying this horizontally across the model if you're interested in my thinking, but in practice, I don't think there's much in it. This is the easy, mindless part. Now, purely for unnecessary suspense before the clean, let me share a little backstory. Uh, backstories make everything good. I'd say most of you have heard of gunk wash and you might be familiar with its most popular formula. Liberally douse your completed model with oil paint, perhaps thinned a little, and then start wiping it off and hope that some staining and effects are produced. Cool. Now this concept absolutely horrifies many of us as we are familiar with the performance of oil paint. So why on earth, or even in low lunar orbit, as in this case, would you do this, Link? Okay, confession time. I am guilty of experimenting with oil and enamel wash variations in the past, and that entailed different mixes to alter the variables, in particular drying times and sheen. The most successful version for me was to use it as more of a filter, and was much more highly thin to the point where I didn't need to remove it at all, just continue over the top. This old Raptor is an example. It was overall filtered with a mix of brown oils, enamel paints, and plenty of thinner. If there was ever a model I'm excited to paint that seems appropriate for this all over methodology of the gunk wash, it's the Lunar Diver Stingray. And you can see wonderful examples here in Max Watanabe Sensei's MAK in SF3D Volume 1 here. I remember asking Max at the time what he used for his gunk mix, and he responded, What? The Tare? Uh, he asked with such a serious face too. I broke into hysterics because instantly I knew what he meant. Tare, like, you know, yakiniku sauce. Uh, you know, because it's like a, a dipping sauce or something that you would put on meat, say at a Korean barbecue place, for example. And uh, you can see the resemblance instantly, right? So a mix of paints was all I could get from him. So, you know, he was either playing coy or really didn't remember or care. So uh, I let it go and promised myself I'd experiment. You know, one day, I'll know, Max, one day. Well, this is finally that experiment. And by way of further confession, it's also my first swing at going full tare. And I'm happy to share it with you. Uh, I said that, should we follow that other Lincoln, Lincoln Osiris from the movie Tropic Thunder? Should we follow his advice and avoid going full tare? Uh, <laughs> not sure, but that's what testing is for. Okay, so here is where we attempt to unruin the finish. The drying time doesn't seem to be an issue with my mix as shown. Whether I started cleaning up uh, like right away or four days later, it seemed about the same. What will likely influence this step more is uh, the sheen of your base color paints. At the glossy end, there won't be much staining. The flatter your base paints and the more staining you can enjoy. That's just something that I will ask you to experiment with. My example for you here is on full glass paint. In a way, we could call this the safest way to gunk wash as we should be able to remove as much or as little as we want. Q-tips or cotton buds as we say here in Australia are my preferred tool. Uh, yes, you will need more than you think because their performance deteriorates very quickly. We can use them dry or we can use them wet. Yes, I am trying to sound like Din Djarin because this is the way. Wet, wet's hard to keep doing too. Wet with an enamel thinner. Nothing fancy, I primarily use the same enamel thinner that I made the wash with, but also tested lighter fluid. Uh, you know, same, same, go for the cheap stuff. They pick up excess paint quickly and can be used like a Photoshop erase tool at first, if that makes sense. They quickly then become a blur tool and then just move our paint around on the surface when it's time to, to change up and get a clean one. Yep, this is just how it works. And I found I would uh, have a couple on the go, using them to clean more when new, blending in the middle of their usefulness, and then to reapply effects and paint once they became saturated. Uh, it all worked, and over the course of one model, you'll be able to figure it out too. Easy. 
Start with your open areas where you want less stain and work up to your details. I wanted these streaking effects into the finish with the Lunar Divers, so I had their size, shape and direction visually locked in before I started, and I worked to bring that into reality. 90% or more of my movements were in the direction of tip to tail, following the contours and curves of the model. As I imagine this might enter the atmosphere belly first, some of those streaks could wrap up around the sides and both along and up the tail if that makes sense. Start a new area with a new Q-tip, rework some of the effects as it collects more paint, and then finalize your effects as it reaches the end of its life. Working from section to section should see you cover the model reasonably quickly, but no rush at all. We are doing so many different effects here at once, so even if it feels slow, you're actually moving along nice and fast. Once I had this to my liking, I set it aside for almost no time at all because I knew I'd fingerprinted or something, so I gave it a light dust of Mr. Super Clear Semi Gloss from the can. Your choice of varnish here is really open, but uh, as mentioned before, the Tamiya enamels really do need a protective coat to stay put. Your sheen is your choice. More gloss for less staining, uh, flatter for more grip. Please experiment with which you prefer. Uh, I went with semi-gloss myself for the happy medium. The classic black dry brush with boomer paint. Yep, with the paint in the butt lid. Try this one out with me. Humbrol Matte 33. It's the one, I promise. It's unrealistic. Sure, uh, I don't disagree at all. We, we are making pretend stuff anyway, so let's fake it up a little more. It's difficult to open. Yes, yes it is, that's a feature. You get at least uh, 250 XP on your lid opening wizardry score and become much more manly, or something. I have a little laugh every time I come back and use this little tin of paint, and it's totally worth it. It seems to have the most balanced properties of paint, consistency, drying time, and color to be dry brushed. And no, I don't use it for anything else. I just occasionally pull it out for just this. There were just a handful of places that I felt the gunk wash didn't edge the model properly. So, I mean, of course, right? It's so random. So expecting to be able to just dip and flick uh, is kind of crazy, isn't it? So that's what I did. I eyeballed a bunch of the places that I felt should become more sooty and streaky as it fell back to earth and made it happen. I did it all in one sitting and then carefully put, uh, put it aside to dry out and harden up overnight. Next morning, it was solid humbrol goodness. So I zoomed into the next step, dry brushing with oils. I don't really have a clever way of explaining this other than to say the finish needed a little more oomph. <clears throat> you know, I'd like to say resolution of detail, but nah, I got it right with the oomph. So I wanted more color, more depth, and more variation in the burn marks. So I went with a mix of old paints and uh, what I expect are oil and enamel mixes because that's how they perform. I went with uh, smoke for transparent black, dark gray and shades of uh, umber, burnt and regular. Oil paints for, for broader strokes and the wet enamels for painting into details. The application and expression is largely the same, using the large brush to work them into the finish and leave some depth inside the details. Some streaks for the appearance of movement and the color variants with the black, grays and dark browns. Working to contrasts, one side is more smoke and uh, has a little bit of sneaky dark umber green shade in there. Uh, I used a paint called Industrial Earth, which is it's a nice paint for this. Uh, and then I went with more brown on the other with the warmer umber shades and the wash brown oil paint. This finish is full of arty expression and bags of fun. Definitely try oil brushing uh, oils onto your model neat. It's one of the best ways to get a handle on how oils behave. Just be really careful. They do take time to, to dry, so handling the model is tricky. Uh, choosing a handle, like in this case the tail, can really help. And do it in sections. And then think about clear coating when you're done. It makes it safer and less nerve wracking. Now, between us, I do admit to doing it all in one go, but you know, I like doing stupid things like this. And I accept the risks, and I do my best to be mindful. It's part of my art, I guess even though that sounds a little pretentious, but you know what I mean. If there is one thing I can suggest at this stage is to try and keep your directional vectors all coherent and contributing to the overall impression of the craft plummeting down from the atmosphere. Except for here, the tail end, where the rocket nozzles are. This was the one place on the model that had me stumped. 
I seriously had no clue how to finish this part. So like always, <laughs> I just take a full speed run at it and see what happens. We can find a way. And thankfully I did. It occurred to me how circular most of the details uh, are back here. So how about continuing on with the genius of Koyokuyama Sensei's design and stipple in circle, burn and soot marks around where the nozzles will sit, then extend them along the tail boom. Is it realistic? Well, I'm not sure, but I enjoy the visual imagery it produces for me. So yeah, that's enough. Let's do it. A primary stipple of reasonably dry smoke or the transparent black oil, followed by an inner ring of dark brown, a burnt umber or wash brown if you need a product name to point at. Whilst doing this, it instinctively felt right and I really enjoyed the effect. So you know, was it the right call? Well, it happened and it's done. So I'm okay with answering yes and pushing this over the finish line. In fact, I liked it so much, it inspired me to finish the rocket bells in the same way. I knew I wanted something very simple. Uh, you know, sure, there, there's no limits on how much time we can spend on our hobby, but I recently saw a friend do what felt like just way too many steps for me. Uh, and it was just to add some soot to a jet airplane engine area. So I tried just that, but the opposite. Black when I had the airbrush out in the paint stage. I also base coated the rocket bells with uh, Mr. Color Gloss Black. Then I carefully sprayed on some pale burnt metal uh, from this range, leaving plenty of black showing for the more burnt areas. Not product specific, I feel any nice high quality metallic would work here. I set them aside until this moment and then boom, brought them back into play and gave them the same oil treatment. Black transparent smoke on the more burnt ring elements and then brown highlight burn for the brighter elements inside and out. It was deceptively fast and I like it. I mean, yes, I am the worst enabler and can talk myself into anything, but I actually think they look okay. They match up uh, with the rest of the finish, particularly the back here, and they've got that wonderfully harsh and visceral 70s, 80s sci-fi vibe. And that means I'm done. More pics on my blog? Come take a look, links in the description. I'd like to thank my supporters on Patreon for paying me to film myself unruining this plastic space stingray. If you'd like to support the channel and get access to bonus videos, then visit patreon.com slash paintonplastic.